say you've reached Adrian Russman. I'm either away or unavailable. Please leave a message and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks. Hi, Adrian. My name is uh, Jason. I'm calling from iCannabis Radio. We're doing a segment tonight. Um, I first want to congratulate and thank you guys on calling back up the civil unions bill. I think that's very commendable. Um, I also want to encourage you not to pull back up the DUID bill or the patient's records bill. Uh, The patient's records bill is a violation of our privacy. It puts a red flag on any person who drives a car that is also a patient. Uh, It's very scary. It's not freedom. (laughs) The uh, DUID bill is not based on science. There is not one study out that shows that cannabis impairs our ability to drive. In fact, a lot of patients wouldn't be able to do things such as drive cars, clean their house, go to work without cannabis. Um, You really need to uh, have science before you make a law. Um, So I want to address those issues with you guys. I'd love to get a comment back from you in, uh, in person. Uh, my number is I hope to hear from you soon again we're taping this tonight so if you can get back to me quick that'd be great thanks good evening and welcome to overgrow the radio good night good night are you going to I'm bed I'm going to bed yeah. I had, it. I had some wax a- so I could probably take a little nap I'm not going to lie this has been a long week yeah oh my god it's we got so much tonight we got an exciting show we got fun stuff we got all the stanleys in or most of the stanleys in they made a trek up from the springs we appreciate that i'm in a room full of really good looking guys so. well thank you oh you didn't mean to <laughs> <laughs> so that lead-in was us calling uh hick and looper's office uh we got some bad news i gotta thank my other half meg for calling me right before the show and, and springing it on me uh duid is back in special session um, not good. <laughs> they really don't have to do anything but vote on it, and we saw how that's going. You know, there's folks like me in particular. I, I, I'm very hard line on this. I take a stance. Show me science on this. Show me where it impairs my ability to drive. I depend on cannabis to drive. I depend on cannabis to do my laundry. I depend on cannabis to mop, mop my floor. I've functioned on cannabis for a decade now, and you're going to tell me it impairs my ability to do anything? I argue that fact, and I take offense. Well, in the states that have legal medical marijuana, there's less uh, deaths from driving. Yeah, and in, in the, there's two studies that, that were recently done, and I don't have them pulled up here on my handy little computer. But both, uh, they, they show nearly 10% decrease in traffic fatalities. And I believe John Walsh's office came back at that with uh, another study. Uh, I use that word very loosely. Uh, the problem with it, 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 you know, it said, great, the fatalities have went down, but the, the mortal injuries ha- have went up. But in that, they also neglected, to, you know, they included all drugs. They, they didn't isolate cannabis. Uh, they have a hard time finding deaths or fatalities Related attributed to purely to cannabis. I mean, that's just the way it is. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that was a negative note. So, how are you this evening? I am doing good. I got up really early this morning and did a protest for Bob Krause, who we're going to have on in the second hour. We are. But uh, we we had some interesting things happen in the courtroom this morning, and we're going to get into detail about that in our good. second hour. Yeah, because I missed it. And I think that's the first one of his hearings that I've missed, I, I believe. Um, and I, you know, I woke up at like 6.30, and there was a part of me that thought, well, I can still make it. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it, it kills me that both of you guys are going through. Yeah, we're as you said, we're going to dedicate the second hour to Bob. Um, I want to jump in here pretty quick to, we're going to get to some news. Um, the DUID, you know, I really don't know what to say to that. Um, you're you're going to be, I, I guess I should digress, that Elise is going to be our news lady from here on. Uh, now that the show's two hours, we're going to try to hit some headlines at the beginning of the show. Um, but we already kind of hit one. I mean, the big news right now is this DUID. The SB uh, 117 is back, and Monday it's in special session. So you should be emailing and calling your senators and Congress people and letting them know not to pass this. And I had promised my other half that next week I might stay in the Springs for a few days, but <laughs> she made the call to me tonight and said, you may be in Denver next week, huh? Um, I encourage people if you can get out. I don't know what the circumstances are going to be in the hearing, if we'll be able to speak or not. But bodies, uh, you know, and definitely contact your reps. Um, the more voices they hear, the better. 
It's, I mean, it's absurd. Well, what they're trying to do is take away our right to drive. It, absolutely. And you got to look at it from another perspective. We're about to pass at least, I'm going to say at least two legalization initiatives in Colorado. They're, they're, the, the numbers are there. It's going to happen. When that happens, as we've seen in studies the last time they tried to do this last year, cannabis stays in your system. The bigger you are, the longer it stays in your system. I guess I'm lucky in that aspect. <laughs> But, um, so that essentially means anyone that chooses a safer alternative of cannabis as a responsible adult cannot smoke for a day, go out and drive their car and get a DUI. So essentially choosing cannabis will make you a criminal, period, mm -hmm. uh, no matter how you look at it. But if you want to go and take heavy duty pharmaceuticals, that's okay. Right. And, and you can get a DUI for that, um, for the pharmaceuticals, but how often do you hear of it? Rarely. They I, don't test for that. No, no, they don't test. And I, I would imagine, unless you you open the door and fall out of the door, the pill bottle is not going to be a big deal, as we saw with my story in D.C. Exactly. They don't give a damn about pills. That's where the money's coming from. That's that's who feeds them. That's who feeds their political overlords, you know. So it just trickles down. It's really a sad thing. And there, there's another thing. I don't know if you found anything on the second bill that was up. I, ha I have not. <laughs> That's okay. We can t talk about it. It's uh, and, and I don't know the official title, but it was the the one that dealt with the patient records. Um, to me, you know, it, I only found out about it a couple days ago, so I really haven't read anything about it. Um, but I got the gist of it, and you know, that one I don't think is called back up, as far as I know. But it's very scary, and it's something we should be aware of in the future because it. Basically, it, it puts a tag on your license if you're a cannabis patient. So, I mean, let's not be narrow-minded. Cops profile, period. I've been a victim of it off and on my whole life until I got gray hair, then they finally quit a little bit. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, it's just absurd that to think that you get pulled over for, you know, whatever the case may be, and they run your license and they know you're a patient. Mm -hmm. Do they know you take pharmaceuticals? Let's go on the flip side again of that. No, they're not going to know that. Are there cameras in Walgreens watching me when I go in and pick up my narcotics? They don't care if you have narcotics. No, they don't. So, Lisa, is there anything else in the news out there? I know we've had a, you know, a pretty stressful, busy week. You know, Bob's protest this morning, I heard it was a great turnout. Actually, for a last-minute protest, there were a lot of people there. We filled the courtroom, so it awesome. was really good. Awesome. And that's been, it's been, we'll just have a little spoiler alert. It's been continued because they can't make up their mind. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to get Bob in here and rant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think what we're going to do now is introduce our guests who have been really patient over here, waiting and hanging out. Uh, we got three. We're waiting on one more that's going to pop in maybe uh, of the Stanley Brothers from American Weed. Josh, Joel, and he's quiet over there. Jesse, Jesse. <laughs> I was getting him to talk. How are you guys? Mm -hmm. So we're gonna put uh, we're gonna put you two on the spot because I heard Josh say he talks a lot when he comes on the show. <laughs> Too much, yeah. Get these guys, put them on the spot. Right, right. Share, the, share the wealth, share the airtime. So you guys, um, you know, you've been on a lot. You guys actually sponsor the show. Uh, well, the conglomerate, I should say. We, we independent in the realm and in dispensary. Um, I actually used your dispensary the other day to do a, an interview with KRDO. <laughs> Last wow. minute interview, they asked me where to meet, and I was like, I don't know. So I called Judy and made it happen. So That's as good a place as any. Hey, you know, they're like, can we use a dispensary? And, I, you know, people are funny about that. You get a news crew out front, they're probably going to wonder what's going on. And I'm like, who do I know close, you know? It's a Manitou, so... Yeah, it worked out. Um, American Weed is what's thrown you guys into the light here lately. So that's we're, we're going to have some fun with that tonight. Um, you know, we've been serious, and, and we will talk about the realm. The realm, the realm of caring. You, you guys have your website up, I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I'm taking over the mic again. Um, the Realm of Caring website is up, realmofcaring.com. Uh, please go to it. Please visit it. We're always improving it. Uh, we're going to have some patient testimony stories up there. Bob Kraus, um, even some of the Dravet syndrome. And if you don't know about that, very violent form of epilepsy that hits small children and uh, causes severe damage to, to their minds. And uh, we found that CBD, the non-psychoactive portion of the plant, is, is really quelling these violent uh, seizures. 
in these children. So learn more about that, and uh, and that's a good way to get in contact with us and also get involved because uh, this amazing plant can do a lot more than just get you high. <laughs> now I'm, I'm not going to argue that once in a while that's not a benefit for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, everybody needs to giggle. You know, you know, it. it something to be said you know i've had this debate with people time time and time again you know when you have pain or you have something that that is with you all the time sometimes that that euphoric feeling just what you still get as a patient is is nice it takes your mind away from that pain a little bit and that's that's medicinal absolutely uh, according to the doctors and the pharmacies i mean that's that's really what the opiates do absolutely uh, is they really mask something they don't fix anything oh some and of the so opiates a, do much more yeah. <laughs> there's 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 certainly a benefit to um just having your mind go elsewhere for a moment in time depending on what your condition is so I wouldn't take away from the medicinal qualities of cannabis in that it's psychoactive um, sometimes that's exactly what people need that part of it absolutely well they so say humor is healing so if you're yeah. happy so you can just look at me hurt. so you can just look at me I'm goofy you'll laugh <laughs> <laughs> That's medicinal. <laughs> so American weed, we'll, we'll get to that. We're going to come back to the realm before you guys get out of here because I want to make sure we get another shout out and a little more description of what's going on real quick. Um, we're highlighting two organizations tonight, the realm and C4CPR. So we're uh, pulling double duty. How did American weed, how did you guys, how did you fall into that? How did that materialize? Um, they were, National Geographic was in Colorado filming different uh, dispensaries, patients, just getting different stories, um, trying to put a series together. And they found Josh, and uh, Josh got all of the brothers together. And what ended up happening is they just came back and asked if, if they could do a little bit more on us. And so they featured us in the first six episodes. Um, and they came back and shot it all pretty quick. Um, but that's how it happened. They were here in Colorado and just found us. So I guess they liked what they saw. and. I wanted to make a significant part of part of the show about us so we said yeah nice nice that uh i remember those emails going around and at the time i was scared of denver i think we may have hit on that a couple times we're gonna what we're gonna do here in a couple minutes is cut out the commercial so i don't want to get too in depth but um your initial reaction i mean were you guys all on board with the idea of of this no, the answer to that is no, absolutely not. You know, when you have six Stanley brothers sitting in the same room, you're not going to get everybody on board with anything. <laughs> it doesn't matter, you know, what kind of pizza you want. And uh, so, no, they, the answer is no. They came to me, and, and I, it took me a while to, for me to. Uh, I took went to my brothers, and I said, "Hey, fellas, here's an opportunity. I think to get the word out about what we're doing. Well, you know, when the cancer research and all the things we've tried to do, and uh, you know." Anytime you're going to go on national TV like that, you're taking a gamble. Sure. But if, if somebody had to do it, you know, and when we first brought it to the guys, they said, you know, go to hell, Josh. No <laughs> way. And I, I, after it sunk in for a little while, we got five out of the six, and pretty soon John, John, Jonathan came on board. And, uh, and we, we had a great time. We didn't have much time to film it, so we were unhappy about that. But we had a good time doing it. Nice. Elisa, I know you have something to add right there. Actually, I just asked if anybody had any questions for the Stanleys. Do we have anybody out there chatting? I don't know. There's like eight people, nine people, ah. ten people. We're early. We changed our show tonight to two hours. Um, what, you know, with, with on those lines, we'll hit on this real quick, and we may have to finish up after commercial. I want to talk to you guys individually about, you know, jumping into that limelight. What was the biggest challenge for you? Um, because it's not something everyone can do. A lot of us are, are talkers. Some of us aren't. So what we're going to do is I'm going to have Chris cut to commercial. And when we come back, we're going to talk about that a little bit more. So stay okay. tuned with us here on iCannabis Radio's Overgo the Radio. Peace. Hi, I'm Rick Cusick from High Times Magazine, and you're listening to iCannabis Radio. Are you a medical marijuana patient or interested in finding out how to become one? Contact Mile High Wellness, where your care is our concern. Conveniently located on Hamden and Tamarack in the Whole Foods parking lot behind Proof of the Pudding, Mile High Wellness offers a wide variety of edibles, hashes, and some of Colorado's top strains. Mile High Wellness, where your care is our concern. 3525 South Tamarack Suite 110 on the corner of Hamden and Tamarack, 720 
382-8516. Mile High Wellness, where your care is our concern. Hi, Josh Stanley here from National Geographic's American Weed. I'm here with my brothers, and we've just recently put together a foundation in Colorado to allow for cancer patients and other patients of debilitating conditions to be able to get a hold of cannabis-based oil that's just about free of charge. I've just about had it with seeing sick patients suffer needlessly just because they can't afford the proper medication. That's what the Realm of Caring is going to change. Visit therealmofcaring.com. The website will be complete and up on four. 20 of 2012. But until then, please contact any of us Stanley Brothers directly through email. You can get us at gratefuljosh at hotmail.com. Now come on, Colorado. We need to take care of each other. Join the realm. That's realmofcaring.com. Thank you so much. Are you a runner? Are you a runner who supports marijuana legalization? Run on Grass is a group of athletes actively seeking to change our marijuana laws. We speak the truth about cannabis, bringing the message through our feet to new ears. Check out runongrass.com to find out more about us, our events, and how to join up or how to sponsor a runner. If you're in the Denver area, please join us for runs or start a group in your area. Running not your thing? Any sport can do it on grass. Runongrass.com. The law offices of Edson Maiden and Mats provide criminal defense, medical marijuana defense, and advice about setting up and running medical marijuana centers, optional premises, cultivation operations, and infused product manufacturing businesses throughout Colorado. With offices in Denver and Aspen, we can offer assistance throughout the entire state of Colorado. Give us a call at 303-831-8188. That's 303-831-8188. Or visit us online at warrenetson.com. Hi, I'm Josh Stanley. And I'm Jesse Stanley. Two of the brothers here from National Geographic's American Weed, and we'd like to invite you to come into our dispensaries and dispensary in Colorado Springs. Come in for the most pure organic strain selection in Colorado. It's all hand-grown by the Stanley Brothers, especially for our patients. So come in and visit us at our two locations, East Platte and West Colorado. And remember, always be kind to each other. And welcome back to Over Brother Radio. We're back with the Stanley Brothers. We are. We're joined by John. Hey, John. Yeah, I think you got to kind of talk into that one. Chris has got your volume all the way down. Very good to be here. There we go. John's actually my neighbor. We're, we live up in the mountains, way out in the mountains. Good old-fashioned manitoids. Yeah, we're manitoids. Uh, my girlfriend sometimes calls me a manitard, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Um, go that far. <laughs> right, right. I, I like us. We're pretty cool people. I'd say. So we'll jump back in. Um, as I said before the break, <coughs> I, I'm sure a lot of people are curious. You know, you, you guys obviously, I know Josh did a lot of activism, but I'm sure not everyone was out in the spotlight. I know for years I was, and I was very much a closet activist with what I did. Uh, I lived in a prohibitionist flyover state, so I kind of had to be, uh, or thought I had to be. So, you know, what was the biggest challenge? And I'm, I'm just going to go around the room like in grade school. Uh, you know, when you, got, when, when you first jumped into to the Nat Geo, to the American weed scene, what was the biggest challenge in your life? Uh, Jesse here. I, f- I feel like the biggest challenge was probably getting on board with the fact that a lot of people were going to see us. Um, you don't really have control over how you're viewed um, as we kind of learned as we watched the show um and just kind of worried about what people thought uh because i mean they could leave a lot of things up to interpretation but uh once we kind of saw the first couple episodes we realized that we were going to look like idiots (laughs) um so we kind of learned to not watch the show after that um (laughs) but uh beyond that uh, we had a really good time just learning uh kind of everything that goes involved with uh, kind of producing a television show is uh, there's a lot to it and we didn't really get a lot sure. of time so we're hoping that in the future if in our future projects we'll we'll be able to have more control of that but it was a good learning experience for sure at least for me yeah yeah uh, I would agree not knowing how we're going to be edited was a huge hurdle um, just kind of throwing that out signing the papers and allowing someone else to take all this material and you know make a story with it was kind of scary editing's always scary yeah but you know and, th- and then there was a lot of stuff that ended up on on the editing room floor no doubt that you know we would have liked to have seen in there specifically uh, patient stuff things like that but uh, it was it was <coughs> a very good experience 
but uh, I, I agree with you, Jesse. It was just putting your neck out there and allowing someone else to pick and choose what was going to go into it was probably the most difficult part for me. And they feel like they also help you, they tell you kind of what you might want to say. Apparently, <coughs> those that don't know me, uh, Jesse Stanley likes two things. Circuses and parades. <laughs> um, in that order. In that order. Uh, they wanted me to say that during the show, and I uh, adamantly uh, refused. But, uh, but you, you know, did, you did. You did tell them. In all fairness, you said I like circuses, parades, and a close third is balloons. Balloons. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> I think that's great. Yeah. With yeah. We also here. found out that we can do the Congo line really well. <laughs> nice. Yeah. It. Uh, you know, we, we, it was musical producers. For me, that was the hardest part because they would send somebody in that didn't know us from Adam, and they'd look at us and say, "Well, I guess just do what you do." I was well, aren't we following a storyline here? Well, not not really. They'd say, and then you know some of the producers were they were pure nacho cheese. You know, they would look at us and say, "Oh, you know, tell me, rock on, let's rock the you know and, and uh, you know kind of the the finger of the gun that." You know, here we go. Come on, you guys are rock stars. Yeah. And cheesy just lines. <laughs> cheesy, yeah. And, and then they'd write stuff like parades and balloons and circuses and things like this. And we're going, that, that's not us. If you really, if you really want to make this what we believe is gonna, can be a good show, let us be ourselves, you know. And, uh, and, and we'll, we'll create something that, that I think is worth seeing. So we felt backed into a corner in that. We only had two months to do it. And then all the reshoots, they come out and, and tell people that we like parades or to do a Congo line, you know, with our hands on each other's hips. That was, for me, by, by far the hardest part about the whole project. Yeah, and missing the, missing the patience through all that numbnuttery. And then <laughs> for me, I think the hardest part was, uh, was being on the mountain and getting prepared for a winter turn. 9,000 feet in that greenhouse was not easy and there were a lot of times where the brothers were demanded and and uh, someone had to be up there and it was usually me I'd jump up there and I was chewing my nails off wondering how the hell we were gonna get that done but we got it done everyone showed up when they needed to be there so uh, I think also being a little concerned about becoming high profile we used to duck the helicopters too <laughs> you know and then Still do. All of a sudden, <laughs> we're on international television telling the world what we do. So I was pretty nervous about that. Sure, absolutely. Well, and I've said before, you know, uh, I know talking with Josh on the show that I admire what you guys do because it is getting it out to the mainstream media, and it is unfortunate. I'm sure there's a ton of footage out there that never made it about patients and what's going on with patients and cancer and, and, and different things with the oil and whatnot. Um, you know, that... I guess we can kind of jump ahead and then I can digress. I, I, I'm guessing that you guys are probably going to keep keep on with this trek with, with the mainstream show. Uh. <laughs> well, there, there's a lot of people that want us to, yes. Um, you know, I think we learned from the first go-around. And really, if you get to know us as people, we're probably... And I'm going to toot our own horn. I'm going to toot my brother's horn. These are the most amazing guys I've ever met in my life. Um, I've, I don't know anybody better than my brothers. They, they are, they're my heroes and I'm the oldest and that's, that says a lot. And, uh, Thanks, Josh. you're welcome. I didn't, I'm, I wasn't talking about you. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, all but Joel. Excluding and, Joel. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, but, but really I, the, we, we love to give, we love the philanthropic side. We love the medicinal side and, and it, we're, we're, we're in talks with different networks right now who want to do a show with us and about the Stanley Brothers. And we said, well, there's a few conditions here. You know, while we are all for, and I, I mean, I could say this on this radio show, um, won't be saying it much in public, but we're for the legalization push. We're for uh, recreational. We're for pot culture. We love it. We love that stuff. But what we do is medical marijuana. Sure. And so if we go to do another show, we agree with these networks, we can't have the bongs. We can't have, you know, the, uh, the, the conventions and, and people blowing smoke in each other's face. We'd love sure. to be there, but, but that's not what we do. And sure. so if we do this, we make it about the Bob Krauses. We make it about the cancer patients. We make it about the Dervais kids, MS, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, arthritis, whatever it is. That's how we get this out to the world. And we get it out showing that, hey, listen, Mabel, your 78-year-old neighbor, she uses our cream for 
for her arthritis, and that's how she's able to still get around the block at her age. And we can show um, that side of medicinal marijuana. So if we do any other projects, you can bet there won't be any circuses, parades, or congo lines. <laughs> well, perhaps. <laughs> well, yeah, John might. Yeah, I, I, I again, like I know you better. very <laughs> admirable <laughs> that, you know, you guys want to focus on the realm and that side of things. Yeah. Um, that's that's a side, you know, that, that we see here in Colorado, but if you go to, say, Louisiana, you know, Minnesota, so many states across the nation, just pick one. Uh, what, 30, well, Connecticut's somewhat legal now, so we'll say 33 states. You still have 33 you can go to, and people don't know what Phoenix Tears is, what it does for patients. They don't know what CBDs are, they the CBNs, they don't know any of that. So it's essential to get that on a network. Um, it, as many networks as possible so kudos on that thanks i kind of feel like right now we're at a point where we're trying to convince the rest of the world that uh the world is actually round and nobody wants to hear it i want to keep the same old maps and pretend like you're going to fall off the edge but you're not and there is a purpose for this plant it, absolutely so i said we would digress a little bit um and i can ask you guys this all as one you know, I guess another thing I'm curious about, um, even with the little stuff that I've done in my life, like being with Occupy and helping with that media, you know, I find a lot of times, like at 2 a.m., they come knock on my window when I finally got a little privacy. Was that was that an issue? I mean, with the camera crews with you guys, when you told them to back away, I need to go to dinner, or, you know, it was... I, I think the worst parts were for Jesse. Um, he had gas one day, forgot to turn his mic on, and just kept ripping him. And uh, <laughs> Matt found it on the cutting room floor. No, you definitely learn to turn your mic. You know, you know, turn your mic off when you're not on, because uh, you start to say some pretty silly things. And uh, yeah. Or you cuss out the producer, and, you know, he's, <laughs> and he's got his headphones on. Well, that's yeah. the other thing. By the way, the Occupy wasn't a little thing, by the way. Oh, no, no. That's Occupy awesome. is a huge thing. I think, uh, you know, I had my reasons that I'm not with the group in the Springs anymore. Unfortunately, it's dwindled down to next to nothing. Um, I, You know, we made connections. We had a conversation. Um, we <sighs> moved on from there. I think we were all very empowered after that conversation. A, a big thing for me that I realized is... Well, I, I sort of already knew this, you know, the right-left paradigm is just not there. When you sit down with someone from the other side of the aisle and you have that conversation, it doesn't take very long to realize how fake that is. You can sit down and agree on the top ten things wrong in the world nine times out of ten with someone from the Tea Party if you're a liberal or vice versa. So, I mean, yeah, Occupy is huge and it's still ongoing. And the way that I see it, what we do right here with medicine and, and patients rights and civil rights is really the way I look at it we're I, I personally I feel I'm continuing the occupy fight um, it's all tied in together it, it's one of the key issues our drug war has failed it was a failure from the get-go before it even started uh, um, so yeah it's it's time so I think my producers telling me it's time to uh, cut to break <laughs> So we're going to do that, I think, maybe. Are we doing that? Yeah. Okay, we're doing that. We'll be right back, right. huh, Lisa? We'll be right back. Peace. California's Attorney General has determined that the Repeal Cannabis Prohibition Act will save hundreds of millions of dollars from our overburdened justice system while creating hundreds of millions in new tax revenues from new sustainable jobs and industries that are friendly to our environment. But we can't do it without your help. We are seeking your donations to get on the ballot. Please go to repealcannabisprohibition.org to learn more about how you can help. It's time to end the war on cannabis in Hemp, California. It's time to end the madness. Paid for by Sensible Californias Incorporated. Hi, I'm Josh Stanley. And I'm Jesse Stanley. Two of the brothers here from National Geographic's American Weed. And we'd like to invite you to come into our dispensaries in Dispensary in Colorado Springs. Come in for the most pure organic strain selection in Colorado. It's all hand-grown by the Stanley brothers, especially for our patients. So come in and visit us at our two locations, East Platte and West Colorado. And remember, always be kind to each other. Are you a runner? Are you a runner who supports marijuana legalization? 
Run on Grass is a group of athletes actively seeking to change our marijuana laws. We speak the truth about cannabis, bringing the message through our feet to new ears. Check out runongrass.com to find out more about us, our events, and how to join up or how to sponsor a runner. If you're in the Denver area, please join us for runs or start a group in your area. Running not your thing? Any sport can do it on grass. Runongrass.com. The Law Offices of Vets and Maintenance and Mats provide criminal defense, medical marijuana defense, and advice about setting up and running medical marijuana centers, optional premises, cultivation operations, and infused product manufacturing businesses throughout Colorado. With offices in Denver and Aspen, we can offer assistance throughout the entire state of Colorado. Give us a call at 303-831-8188. That's 303-831-8188. Or visit us online at warrenetson.com. I'm Gary Johnson, and you're listening to iCannabis Radio, and I want to say, talk it up, Colorado. Hi, Josh Stanley here from National Geographic's American Weed. I'm here with my brothers, and we've just recently put together a foundation in Colorado to allow for cancer patients and other patients of debilitating conditions to be able to get a hold of cannabis-based oil that's just about free of charge. I've just about had it with seeing sick patients suffer needlessly just because they can't afford the proper medication. That's what the realm of caring is going to change. Visit therealmofcaring.com. The website will be complete and up on 420 of 2012. But until then, please contact any of us Stanley Brothers directly through email. You can get us at gratefuljosh at hotmail.com. Now come on, Colorado. We need to take care of each other. Join the realm. That's realmofcaring.com. Thank you so much. Welcome back to Overgrow the Radio. This is Jason. And this is Elisa, your co-host. Elisa was doing research, so she totally... Uh, Spaced was, it out. She did. She <laughs> did. But I love her. We're She's back. like my big sister. We're back with all these good-looking guys, the Stanley Brothers. Well, thank and you again. Oh, wait. Oh. Yeah. A- a- and and of course the host. I get no credit when you guys are around. <laughs> Thanks, appreciate it. I think you're handsome as all hell. All right, thank you, sir. <laughs> um, so I got a... I, I watched American Weed. I had to catch up on, as we were just talking about, I don't really do cable, per se, but I caught up on them on a, a different method, if you will. And uh, I noticed throughout the whole thing, and this is something I don't think I've ever asked Josh about, you know, we all have someone in our battles uh, from the other side that you just can't talk to. You just It's like talking to a wall. There's no common sense there. There's no reasoning. There's... Uh, they just don't want to listen to facts. They don't want to listen to uh, falsehoods. I mean, it's <laughs> it's the type of person they are. So I've got to ask, have you played golf with uh, Mr. Ray Martinez lately? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny you ask that because after my d- our, our debate on American weed, I, uh, I I asked him if he wanted to go out and have a beer sometime and, and discuss, and, and maybe I could set him straight. He said that he didn't, and talking to Ray is like talking to a wall. He just said it. He doesn't want to listen to fact or fiction, okay? He lives in in what we call Ray Martinez land, and, you know, his head is so far up his ass (laughs) that... (laughs) Tell us how you really feel. Well, you know, I've never been so frustrated, and, you know, I'm a a guy that even even my enemies, I try to love my enemies, you know, keep them close, and I've never disrespected Ray to his face. Maybe he got a little heated during that debate, and if you could have seen the whole debate... Um, and, and those are some things that ended up on the editing floor, which is really a shame. Um, but talking with Ray is kind of like a Baptist trying to convince a Presbyterian that he's going to hell. It doesn't happen. You can't, you can't argue you know, with the concept of faith. You know, he said, at one point he said, and what they didn't see in the trail off, he said, you know, uh, since medical marijuana has come to town, crime in Fort Collins has gone up 40%, okay? And which, which, which I said, well, Ray, that's number one, simply not true. When they bombed Sarajevo, crime didn't go up 40%. It doesn't happen that way. No time in history has crime ever gone up 40%. Um, you know, maybe in internment camps. And so, you know, th- it's those kinds of things that the unsuspecting citizen hears this and, and they go run for the hills. He spreads fear and propaganda. And, and elected officials, okay, and people like Ray Martinez and, and Scoot up there who fought the fight, we call him Poop Scoot, by the way. Um, <laughs> I like that. It's kind of yeah. like limp dick. Yeah. <laughs> I have some endearing terms yeah. for some people. Yeah, limp cool. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, you know they're they're elected officials and they're elected to lead. They're they're elected to to appease the masses and to uh, to 
lead through uh, education and understanding, not fear. And that's what Fort Collins has, and it's very unfortunate because it's such a charming, wonderful town. Absolutely. Well, and they, you know, they're supposed to represent the will of the people. And I think, I think the what happened in Fort Collins with with the dispensaries closing is, they they won on the propaganda front on, in that battle in that one little town. Um, and it's happened throughout Colorado in different towns, obviously. But you know, it's very sad that that folks believe that. I mean, I don't know a, a more intelligent way to put that. I mean, to to be a, a, a simpleton there, it's. You know, I mean, come on, the science is there. It's unfortunately, it's a sign of our overall problem in our in our nation. Really, um, it's not just with cannabis. It's we've dumbed down, and and people don't educate themselves on anything. They don't. They they're spoon fed. And the biggest joke that that the United States has ever played on anyone is to get their its citizens to choose sides between CNN and Fox. It's the same message. There's no difference between the two, which, you know, I find I find so interesting how lazy we can really be. But, you know, that's another reason that we decided to do the show American Wheat is because of this spoon fed nature that Americans have. And they listen to this propaganda and they listen to this fear. So we wanted to get it out. And I'm telling you, it made a difference because of all the thousands of fans that we've 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 had come in via um, fan mail or or uh, Facebook. Um, Twitter, whatever they are, these ninety-five uh, percent of them have said, "We learned so much. Wow, we had no idea that marijuana could do this, you know, or could do that." Um, it was an eye-opening experience for them, and that's what I think we need to to, to progress on and, and to keep moving forward on, and not the uh, and certainly not propaganda, but also not the pop culture um, being the only thing that they see are the baggy pants and the you know the bongs. That's that's. That that's not that's not what we're doing here. But so it's not going to convince America anyway. No, uh, you know. no, not at all, not at all. So we're in just a second. I'm going to ask you a question. We, we you guys have an announcement that's pretty <coughs> exciting, but I just want to hit on that. I mean, I think what we're all doing it for. We know that we've got a battle for our lifetime. Um, we're doing it for future generations. Um, I'm going to give a shout out to my daughter because she's listening to her first live over the radio <laughs> tonight. Uh, I have a nine year old out in Ohio, Sophia. And she's a little hempster, you know. <laughs> I've taught her everything I can about cannabis, and I plan to continue to teach her about it. Um, it's never been a drug in our household. It's not a drug. Uh, it's it's parsley, you know. It's, it's oregano. A <laughs> it's a plant, you know. I, we were joking at dinner earlier. Um, I had dinner with our next guest, and... Uh, Elisa, of course. I'm sorry. That's all right. <laughs> you were totally there. You were like the life of the I party. Was. You were. <laughs> and, and, you know, it's just, it's gotten to such absurdity, this this whole scenario. It really has. I want to say hi to Sophia, too. Yeah. Hi, <laughs> Sophia. Hello, Sophia. Sophia. Hey, Sophia. <laughs> <laughs> She'll be happy with all those. Um, what do you guys... I know spare time for any of us in this industry is not common. Um, but again, we'll do the whole like rotating circle thing. What do you guys enjoy doing? I mean, I, I love backpacking. I've been trying to get out with my tent and my hiking boots for a good month now, and I will do it before my birthday. <laughs> um, Jesse here. Berades. Berades, <laughs> uh, circuses, <laughs> balloons. Uh, although I did hear that the cost of helium will be going up because we're running up. That's uh, <laughs> neither here nor there. Um, but uh, I enjoy sports. I love to golf. Um, I love the Nuggets tonight. Hopefully they beat the Lakers. Um, and I loathe the Lakers. But uh, we, we're all pretty much pretty different. Um, I'm probably the only one that doesn't really like to get my hands dirty. Uh, well, Josh too. But, um, uh, yeah, I, I would say for me it's, it's sports and hang out with family for sure. Family is always essential. I, I admire your guys' dy dynamic. Uh, I'm sure there's headbutting that goes on. I have a brother uh, three years younger than me, I suppose, somewhere right in that area. We don't keep track of No headbutting, just broken noses. Wait, yo, yeah, we close fest. It's, yeah. Yeah. What do you think <laughs> Why do you think our noses are so big? We've broken each other's noses so many yeah, my times. My nose is crooked. I can relate, but I also have two older sisters, so I blame them, too. <laughs> <laughs> so they kept so me you have on. bite marks too, and missing I, I hair. Do and missing claw, hair. missing That's what hair. With the sisters. Yeah, mm -hmm. they don't they don't mess around, no doubt. Yeah, Joel here. Um, uh, I have three kids and my wife Amanda, 
and they're awesome. And so my spare time is filled with hanging out with them. Um, now that it's getting warmer, I like to fly fish. So in general, nice. if I'm not uh, working on the mountain or meeting with lawyers, because God knows you do that all the time in this business, right. um, you'll find me fly fishing in a river with my kids. Nice. So does that mean uh, when your freezer is overflowing at the end of the summer, you'll stop by my place on your way in from the river? Sure, absolutely. <laughs> nice. I pitched Bob Krause on that too. Yeah. <laughs> I need to fish more. My back doesn't do so well with getting out most of the time. So. Well, um, I, I liked, I, as Jesse said, we're all very, very different. Um, we're all outdoor people, but we all have our own special interests. And I think it's because we spend so much time together that when we have our recreational time, we split. So I, I enjoy, I love to paraglide. Um, I love to surf and uh, just getting into river surfing as well this year. So I'm really excited about that. Now paragliding, I had a friend uh, right out of high school. I worked for his brother-in-law and, and one of their family members, it was amazing, man. He, he would rig it up in the back of his truck with, with the pulley and the rope and have someone drive and he'd just lift right up. He was, you know, we lived in Illinois. We didn't yeah. have mountains, so <laughs> right, yeah. we had nothing to jump off of. <laughs> right. I've done I that. I saw that on I, one of the uh, Jackass movies. Yeah. yeah. Well, that may be. Uh, that may be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You want to talk Jackass. The first time I, I, I have a power paraglider also, so I can take off from the ground. It's like a fan, you know the backpack and so i take off um and i'm flying around i had no idea what the faa restrictions or anything like that were <laughs> so i'm flying above the city over by five points above you know Denver, nice. and i'm about i don't know 300 feet above the deck and and i notice this commotion down below me and it's uh, sirens and, and and police and and ambulances and i thought oh man i'm gonna follow this this is cool something big's <laughs> going on down there and i realized it was me <laughs> So I landed in a baseball field with guns drawn on me. That, that's always a good afternoon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, honey, um, I'll be home in a little bit. I have feds pointing M16s at me right yeah. now. Can you come bail me out? So Expensive, Josh. Uh, I <laughs> like to travel, most of all. Ooh. Just being in other countries, I like working my brain and trying to learn languages. But while I can't travel, I have Cripple Creek and Blackhawk, and I like to go play poker. Nice. And grow mustache. How do you do with that? And grow, and grow mustache. <laughs> See, I always lose when I sit at a table. If I play slots, I, I'm okay, but uh, the minute I sit down, it's all gone. I, I lose and I win. It's hit or miss. just depends on my patience and how much whiskey's gone down my throat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bourbon guy. Every once in a great while, I'm not a big drinker, but every once in a great while, a little Knob Creek or Woodford is... Knob Creek and Woodford, yeah, those are meant to... Yeah. You know, I went in one of our local establishments there in Manatee one time. I found our one redneck bar is what I did. You know, and I Royal. have a little bit of a hippie look to me. And I asked him for bourbon, and he's like, yeah, we got bourbon. And I'm like, really? Do you have any, like, Knob Creek? He's like, looked at me funny. Mm -hmm. And he's like, you're not five-star here, buddy. No, <laughs> sir, he <laughs> he's like, we got Jim Beam and, and Jack Daniels. And I was <laughs> like, well, that's not bourbon. I mean, technically, yeah. but uh, you, know. you can go get some Maker's Mark at the Mariner. Man. Uh, yeah, the Mariner's more my, my speed. Me too. They so just drop their prices. We're going to cut to commercial here real quick. And when we come back, I promise we're going to get to this big announcement that we've got. Um, so, yeah, we're going to cut, and we'll be right back. We love you here at iCannabis Radio. Peace. Hi, I'm Josh Stanley. And I'm Jesse Stanley. Two of the brothers here from National Geographic's American Weed. And we'd like to invite you to come into our dispensaries in Dispensary in Colorado Springs. Come in for the most pure organic strain selection in Colorado. It's all hand grown by the Stanley brothers, especially for our patients. So come in and visit us at our two locations, East Platte and West Colorado. And remember, always be kind to each other. Are you a medical marijuana patient or interested in finding out how to become one? Contact Mile High Wellness, where your care is our concern. Conveniently located on Hamden and Tamarack in the Whole Foods parking lot behind Proof of the Pudding, Mile High Wellness offers a wide variety of edibles, hashes, and some of Colorado's top strains. Mile High Wellness, where your care is our concern. 3525 South Tamarack, Suite 110, on the corner of Hamden and Tamarack. 720-382-8516. Mile High Wellness, where your care is our concern. 
The law offices of Vets and Maintenance Mats provide criminal defense, medical marijuana defense, and advice about setting up and running medical marijuana centers, optional premises, cultivation operations, and infused product manufacturing businesses throughout Colorado. With offices in Denver and Aspen, we can offer assistance throughout the entire state of Colorado. Give us a call at 303-831-8188. That's 303-831-8188. Or visit us online at warrenetson.com. Are you a runner? Are you a runner who supports marijuana legalization? Run on Grass is a group of athletes actively seeking to change our marijuana laws. We speak the truth about cannabis, bringing the message through our feet to new ears. Check out runongrass.com to find out more about us, our events, and how to join up or how to sponsor a runner. If you're in the Denver area, please join us for runs or start a group in your area. Running not your thing? Any sport can do it on grass. Runongrass.com. Hi, I'm Rick Cusick from High Times Magazine, and you're listening to iCannabis Radio. Hi, Josh Stanley here from National Geographic's American Weed. I'm here with my brothers, and we've just recently put together a foundation in Colorado to allow for cancer patients and other patients of debilitating conditions to be able to get a hold of cannabis-based oil that's just about free of charge. I've just about had it with seeing sick patients suffer needlessly just because they can't afford the proper medication. That's what the realm of caring is going to change. Visit therealmofcaring.com. The website will be complete and up on 420 of 2012. But until then, please contact any of us Stanley Brothers directly through email. You can get us at gratefuljosh at hotmail.com. Now come on, Colorado. We need to take care of each other. Join the realm. That's realmofcaring.com. Thank you so much. Welcome back to Overgrow the Radio. Hey. Well, it's a little sad right now because the Stanleys have become friends of ours. And uh, for the last week or so, a couple weeks, I guess, their grandma's really not been doing good. And they they left her side tonight to be on our show and got a call just a second ago that she had passed. So our heart and our thoughts go out to them. Yes, um, I hope that the family has lots of comfort knowing that she had a long long life absolutely she was an american weed too yes do you remember that episode yes i do she i i think she really liked the flowers you know i i appreciate that because my i'm lucky enough to still have both of my grandmothers and they're both very supportive you know there's people in my family who don't talk to me anymore because of what i do um both of my grandmothers are not those people that's awesome. Uh, um, I've had conversation after conversation about cannabis with them, and they're probably more informed than 80% of the population out there, you know, them, them and my little one. So, um, you know, and, and I, you know, there's really nothing to say. You know, our heart yeah. goes out to them, and if there's anything they need, uh, any of them, reach out to us here at the station, and, and we'll help you out. Mm-hmm. So we're gonna. What we're gonna do now is we've got an, our next guests, if you will. Uh, but we're gonna cut to a call. Uh, Bob Krause and Tom Gallagher are gonna join us after this phone call. Uh, Tom Gallagher was a two-term city councilman, forced out after two terms in in the springs. Uh, term limits. Yes, term limits. I, I, unfortunately, I'd like to see him still there. And Bob Krause is fresh off of uh, the El, pa- El, pa- El Paso County <laughs> Courthouse this morning. <laughs> Uh, 7.30 a.m. protest and hearing. We're going to get into that. It's going to be interesting. I've got some bones to pick with Mr. May, as you're about to hear right about now. District Attorney's Office, may director call? Yeah, I'm looking for the public information officer, please. Sure, hold on one second. Let's not get voicemail. Hey, Lee. How are you? Who's this? Uh, this is Jason. I'm calling from iCannabis Radio. Um, I wanted to touch base with you guys. We're doing a show tonight on a case that's ongoing in the Springs, and I wanted to get a comment from you. Um, let me I have to get your number. Are you the public information officer? I am. Yeah, I mean, you're the perfect person to talk to. We're, we're being recorded, by the way. Um, oh, I, you are, you know, and I used to work in, um, 
media. But awesome. I've got somebody on my other line. I'm just going to have to get your number and call you back. That's fine, so, man. Just one second. Actually, can I just call you back um, in a few minutes? I'm kind of in the process of moving my desk, so it's going to be... Okay, well, I mean, we're doing a show tonight, and I want to get your guys' a statement on, on... Yeah, let me, um, let me, hang on just one second, I'll get your phone number. Yeah, I can give you my number, and then we can call you right back. I think I'm on hold. Yeah, so yeah, tell her that when she calls back... I'll just call give her my cell. Okay, and then, yeah. yeah. That way he doesn't have to... Yeah. Are you there? Yes, ma'am. I've got... What, um, what was your name? My name's Jason. And what's the station? It's iCannabis Radio. Out of Denver. What are the calls on that? Oh, is this a, an internet? We are. And we're going to do a story tonight. I've got two questions. So if there's any way you can just give me a quick shout back, uh, what I'd like to do is just call you right back after you call me. What um, What's the phone number, Jason? I'm sorry. I'm going to give you my cell. It's, and I promise I'll be quick and, and painless. <laughs> All right. What are the questions? Um, I just want to know a couple of questions about the Krauss trial that's going on. Um, what's that? I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Bob what were Krau the questions? I'm sorry. Well, Bob Krauss is a, are you familiar with the case? I think so. He's, uh, I would hope so, ma'am. He's a 63-year-old cancer patient who had a doctor's recommendation for 75 plants, uh, was under his plant count, and had sent in to renew his red card. And at the time, there was something with the paperwork. There was a, a mix-up with the address. The doctor oh, okay. had two addresses. Yeah. This is Kraus. No. Yes, ma'am. What did you say it was? Bob Kraus. Okay. Um, there was a motion hearing today to uh, suppress testi or suppress testimony from a witness, uh, Dr. Bob Melamede, who is a cannabis expert, basically. Uh, he's right there in the Springs at the University uh, of Colorado, Colorado Springs. And, um, you know, it's I, I'd like to address that. I'd like to know that. And then, really... Do you want to know who that guy is? I'm sorry. Well, I'd like to know how the how you guys are are justifying suppressing testimony from a cannabis expert in a trial that is based on cannabis. <laughs> to me, that you know, I just the public is really. And sometimes, and just so you know, Jason, speaking about a trial while it's ongoing is tough. You and I'm sure you understand that, but right. Uh, and what was your other question? You, you guys have a lot of irate citizens, ma'am. I'm just trying to address it from both sides. I did the same thing with the. When when the dispensary shut down, you know, I worked with. One second. Do you have it with you? Sorry, I, I worked with the the drug unit with them and got questions answered, and you know, gave them a chance to express themselves as well. Um, and the other question, you know, is I'm very much a fiscal conservative, and in my mind, like you know, there's folks that are committing violent crimes and walking out the door of the courtroom within a week. You know, this has been a trial that's been ongoing for years. This, this man is 63. He's suffering from leukemia he treats that with oil um a cup it's kind of a two-part thing you know the first part being again how do you justify using our taxpayer dollars to prosecute someone who's a sick dying cancer patient um the second part of that being you know do you guys realize that taking away this oil and putting him into jail will kill him literally It's 502. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I've got that right in the, in the other file. It's over there. Um, all right, Jason. All right. Can I expect a call back pretty quick? Jason, I've got like 10 calls right now that are holding, but can I get back with you? You can, but we're going to be airing this evening. So, I mean, okay. as of now, this hey, is Jason, your response. So I appreciate it. All right. Well, I hope to talk to you soon. Right, I hope okay. you guys have a better right. response, and please Thank think you. of Bob, okay? Bye-bye. What do you want to bet she won't call us back? Hey, Bob. Yes. Do, do you think that lady cared about you? Oh, uh, I don't think there's a face... In that office? In that office that has... You know, they're busy, obviously. I felt very cold. You know, normally I can get someone to, to open up a little bit. 
if you caught her initial a- reaction when she answered the phone, it was like, oh. Goodness. When I was nice to her and she says, "Who is this?" Was I, I believe that was that call. We made like five calls today. I think this was that was the one where she did it. You know, it through the whole conversation, she almost tried to be nice there for a minute, but but it's not in them. Um, you know, she acted like she had no idea about your trial. I I don't believe that for a, a, a millisecond. Well, that's because you. I mean, I mispronounced Kraus and said Kraus. Yeah. <laughs> that, that threw her for a loop. Yeah, it, it, it's my draw. Uh, you know, once in a while it comes out, it's at Kentucky. <laughs> I lived there for too long, I guess. I don't know. Brief, brief stopover. So, Bob, welcome, Tom and Bob. Uh, how are you guys tonight? Oh, hanging in there. Yeah, it's <laughs> been a long day. I appreciate you being up here. Yeah, I it's know all it's, good. It's, it's all good. We started early today with... Uh, protest in front of the El Paso County Courthouse uh, patients right protest it's uh, centered around a hearing that I had uh, surrounding uh, a motion to um, either eliminate and or uh, limit the testimony of Dr. Bob Malamute who it just surprises me that people are not interested in the science or the knowledge or the it just it, I'm just amazed that they're they're afraid I guess I don't I don't understand all of what's going on but when when I was on my journey to find a cure for cancer which is what I'm doing I've got half the cancer in my body is gone and cannabis is the only form of treatment that I'm doing I've had no help from anybody within the medical profession there's been uh, outside of uh, uh, Dr. Alan Shackelford, uh, who's a medical marijuana, he's a physician who helps an awful lot of medical marijuana patients, but I, I don't have insurance, I don't have a hospital, I don't have a doctor, I have cannabis. And cannabis has gotten a, what the Leukemia Society would classify as a partial response uh, to the uh, cancer that's in me from the treatment program that I'm using. They only have one thing that's better than that, and that's a complete response. T- uh, from treatment and my treatment has got a partial response. I've got half the cancer is gone in me. I'm killing the cancer that's in me. Cancer is going away. I- I'm killing cancer that's in my body. I have a cure for cancer in my body. I don't have cancer in my body today that I had cancer in my body yesterday. It's gone. It's gone and it's not killing anything in my body that's healthy. So it's not a drug from a pharmaceutical company that's giving me more symptoms and and uh, difficulties with my life than the cancer starts with. I have something that's not a carcinogen like chemotherapy is that they want to have you take. And who is it that are they anyway? And why is it that they aren't studying this from a scientific point of view? We got a cure for cancer and nobody gives a shit. It pisses me off. If we can open up the eyes of the judiciary now, maybe. We know that the legislatures are totally useless to us. They're bottlenecked. They're they're caught up in this Republican bullshit that has absolutely nothing to do with who we are as citizens, where we are as a, uh, our founding fathers set up for us, and who we are as a nation. We're a country now that doesn't even know who we are, for heaven's sakes. I've asked enough people in the recent past about... Uh, would you agree that we now are a generation that doesn't know who we are and everybody bobs their head up and down like they were a bobbing head moron on a dashboard on on your car. We don't know who it is that we are. That's our fault, my fault, for not telling my son's generation who they are. I'm here to tell you that we're Americans. We stand up for freedom. We stand up for liberty. We fight against tyranny, either foreign or domestic. And right now, we've got domestic problems that have insanity reigning. We have a chance in El Paso County for sensibility to reign when the judicial, one of our checks and balances we still have left maybe in our country, although it's being eroded so fast right now in Washington, you wouldn't believe your eyes and ears the crap that they're putting out and how they're sugarcoating it to make you think like everything is okay. So just keep on going on the way it's going. The way it's going is to death in America and death to America. They're killing our Constitution right now. The law in America has nothing to do with the Constitution. The number one law in our land is dead. They've killed it. We have a chance to revive it in El Paso County, but the powers down there don't care about human rights and human liberties. 
People in America now are numbers. Corporations are the people. We need to wake up America. We need to wake up America and take it back. And, and, you know, the crazy thing is we're all on the same side. We're all Americans. How come we keep fighting each other? There is a there is a agenda that would have Republicans argue with Democrats. But the truth is you're all the same. You're Republicans. And as long as you guys argue with each other, we lose as a country. There is not a difference between an American and an American. And they would have us be divided against our own self. And who are these people? There's an insidious group that wants to put us into a one world order. You've all heard about it. It's coming. That one world order does not include freedom. It does not include sovereignty. It does not include the Constitution of the United States of America. It does not include cash. And if we have people like Dan May, who are already in violation of the oath of office they took to support the Constitution of the state of Colorado, we now have federal employees running our state government. And it's a travesty. And if we don't stand up and stop it, it's, it's over. This experiment in freedom is so close to being over now. I guess that's why they're so afraid that uh, there's a few of us out there that are the patriots. We are the true patriots left of this country. The system is broken. Everybody in the system wants the system to work because that's who their identification is, but they're just as lost as everybody else is. They don't have an identity of who they are. So we've got judges and policemen and doctors and lawyers and all of the finest in our society don't have any idea who they are anymore except by the size of their checkbook. How well they are insulated from the travesty of life in America today if you were, in, were what used to be the middle class. You know, my, my stepdad, who passed away a number of years ago, uh, fought. He was on Pearl Harbor. He was, he was at Pearl Harbor uh, on that day when the Japanese attacked. And he told me for years and years before he passed away years ago that he told me my father and I didn't fight this war. They were talking about World War II for things to be the way they are in America today. And America needs to wait up. What we think is what America is, they're, 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 it's the, the truth. You need to get out and find out what the truth is. The truth is, is our liberties are being taken away every day. Bob, I love your passion. Um, could you back up just a little bit and tell people why we were protesting this morning? <laughs> what, what's going on? <laughs> Who are you, Bob? <laughs> you just walk in and start yelling. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was just walking down the street and I said, welcome sign, so I came in. <laughs> said, please come in and rant. We love it. No, I, I yeah, Bob, we, we would, if you can give us a background on, on what's I'm going on with you. I'm a 63-year-old cancer patient. I was diagnosed with leukemia five years ago and given a two out of three chance to live eight years. This is five years later now. Their treatment program for me, this is oncology, this is this is Western medicine, this is the science of uh, uh, pharmaceutical companies that would load you up with drugs for your whole life. So like my mother now, who's 91, has, oh, I don't know, 20, 30 prescriptions that's just standard that keeps the ka going for the sarmo pharmaceutical companies, no cures, just symptoms that increase in severity from the medicine that they give you. It's a, it's a trip down a path that's going nowhere for anybody that's healthy. And my path led me to cannabis, which is curing my cancer. Uh, I've, got, I've got facts, I've got science, I've got everything it is that you need to do to prove that we've got a cure for science, except being able to get it into, oh, let's say a court of law, for example, that would adjudicate on medical marijuana matters. So the fact that I'm curing cancer in my own body, I've got the proof of it, nobody cares. In fact, they would much rather have nobody know about it. They don't want the jurors to know about it. They don't want anybody to know it. We've got a man in El Paso County. In fact, we've got people all over the state that refuse science, that refuse truth, uh, that just absolutely have doors closed. We knock on doors to try and at least explain what's going on. But we've got United States congressmen that refuse. And I'm not talking about, you know, just last week. For the last year, Congressman Lambred, what's his name? Lamborn. 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 Excuse me, Your Honor, but I don't know your name because you won't let me talk to you. I'm in your precinct here. I'm dying with cancer. I found a cure. 
Doug Lambrad. <laughs> and why isn't it that you're not willing to allow us to at least show you? Are you going to die stupid? Are you going to die ignorant? Well, I know you're trying to kill me. And I'm not speaking directly to Land Doug Lambert because, to me, he, I'm he, I'm just a number to these people. We're all just numbers. They've taken our country away from us, and if we don't take it back, you're all going to be chased after, just like I'm being chased after. I know that in Colorado Springs, in El Paso County, we have the they have the district attorney's office there, policy going out to people that are in the county intimidating them, telling them that if they go public, talk to the local newspaper down there, talk to the media down there that they will be persecuted, that the task force will be sent out after them, that the VNI will be after them to persecute them. This is what's going on in El Paso County. It hasn't gone on like this since Nazi Germany. Wake up, people. They're killing people here in the name of laws that aren't based in science. I know everybody's busy with their lives, but you know if you don't figure out what's going on here, your children are at risk. They're spending money we don't have. They're basing their decisions uh, on laws that aren't founded in science. They're making decisions about poverty from a position that they don't even know how many houses they have. Well, and let's let's just mention real quick uh, the hearing this morning. Let Bob breathe for one second. <laughs> you need some water. <laughs> Um, we, uh, you know, I, I apologize again because I was, didn't come down this morning. I was planning or thinking about coming back at, for the one o'clock one, but of course, then they, you know, last minute, like they always do, they want to push it to eight in the morning so it, they can try to get the crowd. Right, that low. actually only happens the day before the. Yeah, day. absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, and they like to disappear records too. I've looked online before for courtrooms for these two, and it's g nowhere. So, yeah. Um, the, the protest this morning, uh, Bob's hearing, you know, they, and, and the question was addressed on the phone call. I mean, they're, they're trying to exclude someone who is probably the closest to an expert that we have right now f in the field of cannabis and cannabis research from a trial based on cannabis. You don't have to support cannabis to say what the hell is going on there. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's common sense. When you have a trial, you have expert witnesses. Oh, you've been reading Perry Mason again. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, living off in a dream world. Um, Actually, the, the take I got from the DA uh, today was she does not want the jury to know that he has cancer. She's oh, afraid absolutely. that that's going to actually affect people, and they're going to care. Well, and here's the problem with that. On the federal level, they still have that right to be assholes, and I don't mind saying that where they don't have to acknowledge that you're sick, that you're dying, that you're a patient. It's not, they don't care. Their law does not address that. Here's where Dan May screwed up and here's where his catch should be. He's not trying you as a federal prosecutor. Right. He's a state, he, he's a DA, he, he's local, he's here. Um, he doesn't have that law. He has Amendment 20. He has to live by Amendment 20 whether no, he likes it or not. he's chosen not to. He's right. chosen right. to follow the United States Constitution instead of the oath of office to support the state of Colorado. Well, well, wait now, a the minute. problem with that is... I've read the well, United States Constitution. I have yet to find the drug clause. Well, I think it lives yeah. in the Santa Claus. I believe it's okay. in the 10th Amendment, Tom, isn't it, where it says that the federal government shouldn't intervene unless it well, pertains Well, yeah, it's the 10th it Amendment, on. okay? If the power is not specifically granted in the document, that document me and the Constitution... Okay, it doesn't exist. And it was reserved to the states and the individuals. Okay, the, the, you know, the Constitution didn't grant unlimited power to the federal government. Okay, the Constitution granted very limited power in very narrow frameworks. Okay, but somehow the Supreme Court has managed to rule, you know, interstate commerce. Nope. Okay, the, the, the interstate commerce case was originally decided because a farmer said, I'm going to grow corn or wheat. Even though, you know, but it's for my use, okay? We're going to grind it. We're going to eat it. We're, it's, it's ours. And the federal government said, no, 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 you're not. See, we have set production quotas, okay? And you, growing your own wheat, independent of our quota system, well, that has the potential to disrupt interstate commerce. So the fact that, you know, you're, you know, you, and, and so when the farmer was no longer allowed to pick and choose what crops he put in the field, uh, that's that's where we went off the rail. Sure. Okay, but this decision is like 50 years old. 
Yeah. I mean, it's not new. Well, and that's unfortunately that's where a lot of our prosecutors and our, our policy is. Is it's fifty years ago. Right. I mean, you know, let's preserve the legacy of Richard Nixon at all costs. Right. <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, come on, people. Well, I mean, <laughs> e- e- even Richard Nixon. I think a lot of people don't know he he. Well, before he declared his war on drugs, or redeclared it, if you will, he appointed the Schaefer Commission to do do a study on cannabis. And uh, if you recall, the Schaefer Commission mm-hmm. came back and said, and "Oh, said legalize it, should, it." Yeah, they said it should be taken off the schedule. It's uh, that what I say all the time. It's not a drug. Right. <laughs> you know, it's a medicinal herb. There's a big difference. Um, yeah, he, let's see that count them filed counterculture people. It. Uh, yeah, you I know, mean, it's he like filed because people that were like. Against Richard Nixon, were smoking marijuana, and so well, absolutely that's the easiest way to kill off the dissent. And, and it's not hard to follow the money, even nowadays, in, in the war on drugs. Um, you know, we're fighting pharmaceutical companies, we're fighting alcohol, we're fighting tobacco. It's it's really no big secret. Um, yeah, I mean, look at you know, you go to court. You know, I'm surprised. Well, but you haven't been adjudicated yet. But I'm I'm sure that you know if things go against you. You're also going to have to pay for all kinds of psychiatric treatments. You know, sure, it all ties the judges in. Are, Your analysis you know, tests, uh, that's a huge industry that's come off the drug war. Right. And, uh, I'd you know, like to own a UA company. Okay. <laughs> well, sure. I don't think I want to handle piss all day. But <laughs> 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 so, Bob, um, it's stressful. I, I know it is because it's stressful for me watching you and Elisa deal with this. Um, you know, I I'm do what I can. I, I, I guess, you know, where we're at now on this is, and you guys were there, the three of you, and I want to just explain to the people listening where we're at in the process, whether it's Bob, Elisa, or Tom, either one, um, because it's their, their lack of decision today really says it all about Bob's case, I think. They don't know what the hell they're doing. I'll just throw that out. I, <laughs> well, sure they do. But they're picking on Bob. Okay, they, they know that. Okay, that the, the extent to which they're going to continue this, you know, misogynistic behavior is, well, it's in their hands. Well, and um, so instead of making a decision today, um, they've asked them to file briefs. Each lawyer, ha- the DA has to file a brief saying why Dr. Melamed shouldn't be able to testify. And um, the public defender is going to file a brief saying why he should. I, I want to read that brief. I want to read what the prosecutor has to say. I, oh. I, it's legal. Karnak they, vomit. They're, they're blinded it's federally to, illegal. They're blinded <laughs> to any, any reality. And unfortunately, our court system is blinded to the reality of our dealing with people. And only if there's an occasion where a judge has some compassion really does the fact that a person is in there uh, receive any kind of uh, compassion. The system is there just to chew up people. The system is there to take people's money, to put people in jail. Uh, and the reason that it's set up is so that the system can exist. It pays for the system. So that whole system that now is threatened by a new uh, strange <laughs> miracle drug that cures cancer, it, it doesn't know how to act. And rather than reach out and embrace it and saying, you know, thank God that we have something like this, that really we're treating cancer for free. You know, it's you can grow a cure for cancer in your backyard. I can show you how to make the medicine. Give me a call. They don't want you to know that. They'll silence me, and they're trying to silence me as quickly as they can. The The man that, uh, that came up with the most information about this for folks is still underground as a, as a criminal being prosecuted by governments because he's helping people. I don't understand the insanity of it uh, at all. Sure. We've got something that works, and they won't look at R- it. Rick Simpson, Simpson should be paraded as a hero Absolutely. Uh, mm-hmm. around the world. I mean, he, he rediscovered, if you will, the cure for cancer. Um, as I like to point out, cannabis was used for thousands of years for All everything. All kinds of things. Mm-hmm. Um, it was only unmedicined. Oh, you like that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was only unmedicined in about 1937 uh, when, when greed came into the picture and money. I mean, it's plain uh-huh. and simple. That's exactly and, right. And, I mean, you can look at, nowadays, you can look at what's going on with you, Bob, and Elisa, and all of us in this fight. Um it's very much a civil rights issue, and, and there's so much we can talk about and so much we can get into. But I'm getting the finger from my producer. He's flipping me off over here. So I think <laughs> what we're going to do is take a, 
a commercial break and then come right back and keep you guys around to rant some more. We'll be right back on Overgrowth Radio. What's up, Colorado? This is Jada. And this is Dust. We're the Weed Pimps. That's right. Come on down to our warehouse at 62A Mount View Lane, Colorado Springs, Colorado, 80907. Any day of the week, any time. And we will show you glass blowing, screen printing, and everything we do at the Weed Pimp Warehouse. That's right. You can get your custom screen print. We also do rush orders. If you need a heat press, we can get that done. That's right. Also check out our mobile advertising. In the meantime, get with us on Weed Pimp Clothing on Facebook and on the YouTube channel, WPTVJDub. And if you need to get a hold of us at our warehouse, the phone number is 913-484-4550, 719-684-5793. Ladies of Colorado, we've kept you in mind. Look out for our full line of The Ganja Girl. That's right. If you want to look fly, make sure you get your smoking gear. We pimp clothing. Ladies first. Ganja girl approved. Ganja girl approved. (laughs) Are you a medical marijuana patient or interested in finding out how to become one? Contact Mile High Wellness, where your care is our concern. Conveniently located on Hamden and Tamarack in the Whole Foods parking lot behind Proof of the Pudding, Mile High Wellness offers a wide variety of edibles, hashes, and some of Colorado's top strains. Mile High Wellness, where your care is our concern. 3525 South Tamarack Suite 110 on the corner of Hamden and Tamarack. 720-382-8516. Mile High Wellness, where your care is our concern. Hi, I'm Josh Stanley. And I'm Jesse Stanley. Two of the brothers here from National Geographic's American Weed. And we'd like to invite you to come into our dispensaries, in Dispensary in Colorado Springs. Come in for the most pure organic strain selection in Colorado. It's all hand-grown by the Stanley brothers, especially for our patients. So come in and visit us at our two locations, East Platte and West Colorado. And remember, always be kind to each other. Let's face it, rules and regulations are complicated, especially in the field of medical marijuana. Let Medical Marijuana 101 help you get through the compliance process. We can also explain to you your employment requirements, your employees, and your business. But our work doesn't stop there. Our experience in cultivation ranges from the design of grow rooms to the diagnosis and resolution of grow problems. Visit us at www.medicalmarijuana101.com or call 303-388-7706. That's 303-388-7706. The law offices of Edson Maiden and Mats provide criminal defense, medical marijuana defense, and advice about setting up and running medical marijuana centers, optional premises, cultivation operations, and infused product manufacturing businesses throughout Colorado. With offices in Denver and Aspen, we can offer assistance throughout the entire state of Colorado. Give us a call at 303-831-8188. That's 303 303- 831-8188 or visit us online at warrenetson.com Welcome back to Overgrow the Radio. We have Bob Krause and we also have Tom Gallagher tonight. And I'm hiding over here in the corner. Oh, we do have a host, don't we? Who, Chris? <laughs> I want to thank Mr. Chris Custer for all his hard work tonight. Um, I also... You know, I've kind of breaking my rules. We're switching to a two-hour show, so I have to medicate. Um, I have back pain. I can't sit in a chair for two hours if I don't. Um, But I want to give a shout-out to my sponsor, uh, co-host, friend, big sister, you know, all the above. Um, SoCo, SoCo M&J in Colorado Springs. What's your address there? We're at 2815 North El Paso. Yeah, if you have not been to SoCo... I, I don't know what to tell you. It's the best, the it, best but I'm a little prejudiced. Best of Colorado Springs 2012. You right? know, I, I agree, Bob, because I, I'm uh, there's certain things in life I'm a snob with. My coffee and my cannabis, you know, and uh, I shop at two dispensaries in the Springs. Mm-hmm. Well, three, you know. Yeah. A couple more. There are some other good ones. There are, there are, and, and we encourage them all to come uh, advertise with us, and we'll promote them too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, to jump back on the topic here, uh, Tom Gallagher's with us, and as I said, Tom spent a little time uh, as a city official in our lovely Colorado Springs, 
uh, Tom amazes me because he, he's one of the first dis former current city officials that I've dealt with in all my dealings with the Springs that, that has a bit more of an open mind, if you will. Um, so I guess my question for you, Mr. Gallagher, is spending, you know, the eight years or whatever in the council, um, the city's attitude towards the MMJ when it came in, I mean, you you were sitting when right. the Amendment 20 passed. I'm guessing. Well, no. Right, right, I mean, right, right, I was not alive far, when Amendment 20 well, right, passed. But not, but far I <laughs> not far after that time, you were sitting. So right, you, was it was still fairly new, I guess, is my point there. Um, what was, I guess, first, what was the initial reaction of the Springs that you saw even before you were in office? Well, I mean, towards you, cannabis know, you, you have patients? to look at um, up until, you know, the infamous Department of Justice memo that, that misled everybody. Yeah. Um, Colorado had Springs had six, maybe ten dispensaries sure. uh, operating as a dispensary. They weren't creating a problem. Um, it was actually the industry that came forward and said, "Look, um, it's about to hit the fan." Okay, this this little Department of Justice memo is is you know open the floodgates and you know we don't want to mess with what we've got here. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, folks understand that, you know, Colorado Springs is deemed to be one of the most conservative communities in this country, if not on this planet. Yeah, we have, what, three military bases? Five. Five. And, and we have how many, God Focus only knows the how many big churches. And well, and I mean, and you know, well, it's called New Jerusalem. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, it, you know, it's one of these... Focus on the family. You know, because it, it's <laughs> been painted as family. evil, you know, right-wing nut, you know, white bread conservative, radical. Um, we're people. Okay? And, you know, for us, when this issue finally came to us, because, of course, you know, our city attorney said, oh, you can't do this, it's federally illegal. And our police chief says, oh, you can't have this because it's federally illegal. And it's like, well, excuse me. Okay, one, it's not your call. Okay. The decision is up here, and what we decide you will do or you will be replaced. Um, by the way, um, our police chief is now down there in Sanford, Florida, uh, yeah, dealing with uh, <laughs> you know, a Trayvon Martin case. <laughs> okay, so, you know, I mean, it, it just proves that excrement floats. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I dealt with the, uh, I don't know if you've had a chance to watch the whole YouTube video of me in the police meeting back in Occupy with uh, Rigdon um, Osh Oshep. Oshevsky, Commander Oshevsky out mm -hmm. in Golden Hills, uh, the head of riot police, who I don't remember. I wasn't real impressed, and I'm going to just let you continue on that note and leave it alone. Oh, okay. Um, but, you know, people tried to frame this because, you know, we had, you know, DA Dan May making regular appearances telling us what kind of horrible things were happening in Colorado Springs because of medical marijuana. Um, what were those horrible things? Well, see, that's the funny thing, because we asked our police department to start tracking these evil incidents, and uh, they kept reporting back that there wasn't anything to report. But that didn't stop Dan May. I, I have a lot of friends who are in law enforcement, family members even, and if you ask them, you know, if they ever have issues with cannabis, they're going to tell you no. Um, unless they're on a drug task force out kicking down Bob's or Elisa's door, they don't have any issue with people that are high on cannabis it's the drunks it's the people on you know meth right it's the, it's the other some of the other harder drugs and i think a popular misconception alcohol is, is one of the hardest drugs out there i mean tobacco and alcohol if you know yeah, they're highly addictive study out of spain it altering. takes into account all of the sides the social moral the whole thing and number one is alcohol well not to mention it'll kill you yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so Colorado Springs is definitely an alcohol town. Uh, we definitely have bars, so we know we that do. that was somewhat accepted. <laughs> well, you know, the issue revolved around, and, and you know, Dan May still has yet to, to figure this one out. It wasn't a right or wrong issue for us on the city council. And that, that question had been put to the public and decided back in 1998. And, and well, that was the passage of Amendment 20. It said that in, in the state of Colorado... Okay, Pace, people with qualifying, you know, disability, disabling illnesses have a right to access this plant. They have a right to get well. And, and what government doesn't understand is that a right is a naturally occurring condition by virtue of your existence. It is not a gift from government. It is 
because it is. Mm -hmm. Okay, Bob has the right to get well, and Bob Absolutely. has the right to access whatever he needs to get well. Okay, not in El Paso County, not well, yet. So not with Dan May. You know what we did is we looked at it and said, well, what we do know is that the you know because a lot of this you know, public officials in, to interpret voter intent. Okay, well, what I do know is that the citizens of the state of Colorado didn't say only one side of this transaction is legal. Okay, Bob is not a criminal, but he has to do business with criminals. Right. Okay. Like that, me. That's. <laughs> well, yeah, and no. I love I love the comments. Okay, the instructions you know, from the, the citizens federal. were to figure it out. <laughs> right. Okay. Even but the it's federal right. government has has commented lately about the you know we're not going to target patients, but we're going to target the larger scale operations. Who the hell do they think we get our medicine from? You know. Right. I well, mean, see, well, if they're not targeting patients, they can't target the places they're getting their medicine from. Why no, because that targets me. I mean, I... I well, but see, that's a ready-made federal conviction because your business records are proof of RICO violations. Sure. I mean, you know, it's... it's. Well, and here's a point. Uh, we'll, we'll just get all off track for a minute. Um, something that I would argue, and I want to see argued at some point... Well, I don't want to see it argued at some point. But when they go in and shut down these dispensaries and, and you know, with the letters or, or whatever the case may be, how is threats it? Threats and intimidation. That's what it is. Well, it's strong arm robbery when they actually raid them normally. Ninety nine percent of the time, they go in, they take computers, they seize big right. Accounts, I mean, they take anything you of value. You a business. They you leave go you to jail. jail. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so why doesn't the government foot? have to obey the laws that it imposes on the rest of society? Well, in most of those cases, there's never charges pressed. The feds just come in and do their thing. They, they steal they, everything. They loot. They loot your yeah. business. Right. Uh, that's exactly what they do. Um, we got way off track there. We were talking <laughs> about Dan May. <laughs> um, well, it's because he's such an unpleasant topic. Oh, well, well and he's also, as we <laughs> talked about in the break, in, in my opinion at least, he, he's really just an extension of the federal government because he's not working for any of us here locally. He, he's, he well, is their puppet. Yeah, no, I mean, and you see the same thing in our state attorney general, John Sothers. I mean, you know, Absolutely. I hear and I correct people. You know, they, you know, they vilify, you know, the U.S. Attorney for the District of Colorado, John Walsh. And, you know, John Walsh's job is to enforce federal law, okay? He doesn't have to consider Colorado Constitution or Colorado. I mean, that's not in his purview, okay? But our state attorney general took an oath not only to uphold and defend the Constitution of the state of Colorado, um, and he has decided that no, his allegiance is to the federal government and not to the people that voted him into office. Do Dan you, May let me is interject cut real from quick. the same mold. I mean, these people all came out of the El Paso County District Attorney's Office. Sure. I mean, and, and there's been a problem with abuse of authority now for a number of a number of years. They can't seem to have a man in that office who doesn't somehow usurp his authority. They they steal from it like they do up in El pa in Arapahoe County, where if you want to be up in there, you just steal the methamphetamine and take it out and sell it to the prostitutes, and and that's okay if you're a sheriff. You only get 33 days. Well, that's almost like a sabbatical. Well, we can't hold a sheriff to the standard we hold you bob i mean that's yeah bob you're a cancer <laughs> patient you're you're an evil evil man <laughs> there's, there's more evil out there than we need to be addressing and if we don't come together as patriots as freedom fighters together then our future for our children is gone people like dan may are leading us down a road to where our children don't have a future through lies, through deceptions. I mean lies. The man will lie right to your face. He did to me. He told me that he was willing to get the science, that he would be more than happy to. Uh, here's his quote. I am in total support of medical marijuana in Colorado. But yet the man has totally closed the door to science. Just like now, they're trying to close the door to science to the courts. And hopefully... We've got some judicial people in El Paso County who are patriots, who understand that the number one law we need to be protecting in Colorado is the Colorado Constitution, and that there is going to be no support for that from the district attorney's office. And, and all these people have to work together, but maybe we got at least one judge. Yeah, I... I wasn't there today, but previously, you know, I, I think I, I don't know that I've missed any of your, your appearances. And 
I've I, just seen so many people along the way to have an opportunity to do the right thing. And it saddens me to see so many people not able to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know how, why, how that works that way. Uh, it a lot seems of times it makes me think like maybe I'm the person that's doing the wrong thing. But trust me, what I've seen, five-year-old girls, a little girl who has uh, seizures, Dravet syndrome that causes her as much as 30, syndra 30 seizures every night when she sleeps. And the doctors can do nothing for her. And with cannabis now, 90% of her seizures are gone. I see veterans who suffer from PTSD and these symptoms that come back, where uh, uh, one veteran that I've worked with has said that his symptoms are as much as 12 to 18 hours of nauseousness uh, every day, two or three times a week. That'll happen for him, and he can't deal with it. And this cannabis has stopped. He hasn't thrown up now since December. He hasn't gone into these... Uh, uh, debilitating dissociative situations now, which were an every two month occurrence, hasn't happened to him now in five months. Uh, it's changing people's lives. Another person today that I heard about has got a clean report from our oncologist from spots on her lung from cancer. There is no cancer there and she's been awesome. on the medicine. But they don't want us to bring this information out to the public. I don't know why, for heaven's sakes. Well, because but, the machine is called cancer research. Well, and it's, it's not simple. cancer cure. Okay. Right. I mean, look at doctors treat symptoms. Doctors don't cure disease anymore. There's no money in cures. There's no, money the in band-aiding your symptoms. And if, if you make a pill that cures things, then you don't need to take a pill every month. There's no right. money in that. Um, you know, when you can make an oil, I don't know if Chris has the camera on me, but when you can make an oil, you know, that's um, an oil that comes from a plant that's harmless uh, with no side effects, it's a threat. And that's that's what I see. I think we talked about earlier. Um, <laughs> I'm sharing the oil because it came out too quickly. <laughs> and uh, it, I think that's what we see right now. If you follow the money trail, it, it, it does lead back to the pharmaceutical companies. And, and also, you know, alcohol, tobacco, and some other others along oh, the way. Prison industrial complex. It, exactly, I mean, exactly. You know, we, we, we need a million nonviolent drug offenders every year, you know, just to keep, you know, Geo Group and... You know, uh, what is it? Criminal Corrections of America, CCA. Yeah, Publicly I don't know. They, traded companies. They change their name every few years after there was like scandals and, and you know, wasn't it Whack and Hut for a while? Right, Whack and Hut is now Geo Group because, yeah, well, you yeah. know, it's, they got this little slavery thing going. You know, it's like, well, because see, when you're in prison, you get 15 cents an hour. Apparently, you know, minimum wage laws don't apply. Right. Okay, but that doesn't stop. The private prison system from selling your services for eight to ten bucks an hour, pocketing the difference. That's called slavery. Oh, it's a huge, huge and it's industry. Being traded on it's Wall publicly Street. traded on the New York Stock Exchange. Yeah, I mean, people are making money off of, of what you said, nonviolent mm -hmm. drug offenders. Sixty percent of our prison population is nonviolent drug offenders. Um, somewhere around what is it these days? Six hundred thousand people a year go to prison for cannabis. Well, at um, least. It's absurd. I mean, I mean, what has to happen? I think, Bob, what you've been saying, um, it's the unity. It's it's people have to realize, and we talked about this a little bit in the first hour. They have to realize there really is no left and right. It's a fake paradigm that's put up by our government to keep us divided. Mm -hmm. um, it's the same thing that I encourage through everything I do through overgrow the government, overgrow the radio, and, and part of the what I bring to the board in, in on the Colorado Springs Medical Cannabis Council is unity. It, we have to we can all have a separate function we can all belong to different organizations and, and do our things in our communities and do different things but when it comes down to it we all have to stand together for the common cause well we have to understand what reality are we going to believe in okay are we going to believe in the experiment set forth by our founding fathers that said in this country okay the power of government derives from the people's consent to be governed Sure. Okay, so that the people retain the right to say how it's going to be. And government is ex expected to honor, respect, and obey those instructions. Okay, that was the model. And it's okay, totally we, backwards. Well, what, what it, and we rejected the whole divine right of kings where God picked the king, king picked his cronies, they created government. Okay, and if you weren't in the government or ruling class, you didn't count. Your job was to feed the machine, that you would be robbed of your labor. Okay, it well, would be distributed to, you know, the haves. Or you would be in a perpetual state of have-not. We're going to, yeah, 
I mean, I mean, in my view, we're we're heading right back very quickly to slave labor. There, the 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 gap in classes is is growing daily. We're gonna jump out. We went way over on our commercial break, and I thank my producer for being such a nice guy and letting us do that. Uh, we're gonna come back and rain a little bit, bit more. We're gonna call Audrey Hatf- uh, Hatfield from C4 CPR. <laughs> Boy, I'm just <laughs> twisting my words tonight, yeah. aren't I? Um, and we're gonna talk to her a little bit. She's got an exciting thing going on. Um, so stay tuned here on Overgo the Radio. Hi, Josh Stanley here from National Geographic's American Weed. I'm here with my brothers, and we've just recently put together a foundation in Colorado to allow for cancer patients and other patients of debilitating conditions to be able to get a hold of cannabis-based oil that's just about free of charge. I've just about had it with seeing sick patients suffer needlessly just because they can't afford the proper medication. That's what the realm of caring is going to change. Visit therealmofcaring.com. The website will be complete and up on 4 20 of 2012 but until then please contact any of us stanley brothers directly through email you can get us at grateful josh at hotmail.com now come on colorado we need to take care of each other join the realm that's realmofcaring.com thank you so much hi i'm rick cusick from high times magazine and you're listening to i cannabis radio are you a medical marijuana patient or interested in finding out how to become one Contact Mile High Wellness, where your care is our concern. Conveniently located on Hamden and Tamarack in the Whole Foods parking lot behind Proof of the Pudding, Mile High Wellness offers a wide variety of edibles, hashes, and some of Colorado's top strains. Mile High Wellness, where your care is our concern. 3525 South Tamarack, Suite 110, on the corner of Hamden and Tamarack. 720-382-8516. Mile High Wellness, where your care is our concern. Are you a runner? Are you a runner who supports marijuana legalization? Run on Grass is a group of athletes actively seeking to change our marijuana laws. We speak the truth about cannabis, bringing the message through our feet to new ears. Check out runongrass.com to find out more about us, our events, and how to join up or how to sponsor a runner. If you're in the Denver area, please join us for runs or start a group in your area. Running not your thing? Any sport can do it on grass. Runongrass.com. What's up, Colorado? This is Jada. And this is Dust. We're the Weed Pimps. That's right. Come on down to our warehouse at 62A Mount View Lane, Colorado Springs, Colorado, 80907. Any day of the week, any time. And we will show you glass blowing, screen printing, and everything we do at the Weed Pimp Warehouse. That's right. You can get your custom screen print. We also do rush orders. If you need a heat press, we can get that done. That's right. Also check out our mobile advertising. In the meantime, get with us on Weed Pimp Clothing on Facebook and on the YouTube channel, WPTVJDub. And if you need to get a hold of us at our warehouse, the phone number is 913-484-4550, 719-684-5793. Ladies of Colorado, we've kept you in mind. Look out for our full line of The Ganja Girl. That's right. If you want to look fly, make sure you get your smoking gear. We pimp clothing. Ladies first. Ganja girl approved. Ganja girl approved. <laughs> California's Attorney General has determined that the Repeal Cannabis Prohibition Act will save hundreds of millions of dollars from our overburdened justice system while creating hundreds of millions in new tax revenues from new sustainable jobs and industries that are friendly to our environment. But we can't do it without your help. We are seeking your donations to get on the ballot. Please go to repealcannabisprohibition.org to learn more about how you can help. It's time to end the war on cannabis in Hemp, California. It's time to end the madness. Paid for by Sensible California's Incorporated. Hi, I'm Josh Stanley. And I'm Jesse Stanley. Two of the brothers here from National Geographic's American Weed. And we'd like to invite you to come into our dispensaries in Dispensary in Colorado Springs. Come in for the most pure organic strain selection in Colorado. It's all hand-grown by the Stanley Brothers, especially for our patients. So come in and visit us at our two locations, East Platte and West Colorado. And remember, always be kind to each other. Welcome back to Overgrow the Radio. Hi. Man, I got to give another shout out to the Beasties. What a loss. Yes. I grew up, I, you know, I rode a skateboard for 20, well, at least 20 years. Long time. 
And the favorite, my favorite music in my ears is when I skated was the Beasties. To know that they'll never be the same, you know, Mr. Yawk is gone, and and that is sad. One of the voices, you know, they they've all got their voices, but it's never the same. So we we're working on getting Miss Hatfield on the line real quick here. Give me time to rant. Hello. Oh, Miss Hatfield's at the bar. I forgot about that. Good evening. How are yeah, you, ma'am? I'm, I'm going out to my car. <laughs> Jeez. She's out drinking. You can't ever catch her when she's not at a bar, can yes, you? Yes, my sister is here and I am partying. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> Good for you. Do you have a buzz on yet? Do you have the like the permagrin? I'll be right back. <laughs> Hold on, I'm almost out. <laughs> she's at one of our local drinking establishments, I think, in the Springs. Okay. Hey, how I are am. you tonight? <laughs> I'm doing great. My sister's out here, so we're out here nice. uh, with some of her friends from Fair Play. And I was asking if you had a permagrin going yet, if, if you had a good buzz on yet. Oh, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Good stuff. Good stuff. Well, we, we're here with Tom Gallagher and uh, Mr. Krause. Uh, you were with him this morning, and we wanted to call you in and just keep you in for the last 15 or so. And uh, get your feelings on everything that's going on with Bob. (laughs) Well, um, I think that the prosecution doesn't have a case, and they're trying to do whatever they can to prolong, obviously. I mean, here we are again, and um, the trial has been set for... January 25th rather than or I'm sorry June 25th rather than June 4th um and I, I you know I mean it's I didn't like, even it's know that one, I, yeah it's one one thing after another yeah they the trial was supposed to be the 4th today it was changed to the 25th but the birthday party's still the 4th Yes. Don't worry about the yep. 25th. Focus on the 4th. That's well, all Bob, I, I got to butt in real quick because, you know, I told you before my birthday is on the 7th, so I was going to ask you tonight if, if I come down on the 4th, can I share some birthday cake Oh, with yeah, you? we got birthday cake <laughs> down at the courthouse uh, on, on, on the 4th. Well, Lisa, your trial starts on the 4th. So. It does at 9 o'clock. Yeah, next week yep. we're going to be uh, dedicating the hour to Miss Elisa and her, her entourage, whoever we can get on we, we're gonna provide character witnesses pre on the show so maybe if dan may is watching he'll 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 know it's a waste of his time okay <laughs> <laughs> so so audrey I, I was just uh talking to tom in the break and and i'm gonna get both of your opinions on this i i feel there's got to be recourse to all of this that we're dealing with right now um, I feel our, our state officials are not standing up for our rights as elected officials, not, not you know, pursuing the will of the people. Um, there's got to be legal recourse. There's got to be something we can do. I know there's recall elections. I know that's one option. <laughs> well, no, that's your option. Yeah, I mean... It, yeah, unfortunately, we live in a world now where government doesn't feel that it has to obey the laws that it imposes on the rest of society. And, and then right. turns around and expects society to respect law. And, and it just doesn't work that way. It's become dictatorial. It's become tyrannical. You know, it's a ruling through fear. Well, you know, I think... I mean, Bob shouldn't be going through this, okay? Bob is a no. patient. Bob had a referral from a physician. The physician said, Bob's going to need 75 plants because it takes a lot of plants to create this medicine. And the Constitution provides for an affirmative defense. It says, if you are a patient with a qualifying illness, it's not a mandate that you have a red card. You know, you do not have to pay the $90 to the state, or now it's $35 to the state, to be on the registry to be protected by this affirmative defense. Read the language of Amendment 20. That's the whole right, Use Webster's Dictionary. Okay, do not use, because, you know, lawyers got their own book. It's called Black's. And in there, voluntary is defined as mandatory. Um, no, okay. Laws should be written using the common usage of the word, at you know, of the day. And you know, these semantic games, we just can't put up with them anymore. We need to understand that they are going on. And just it, I, I, well, I, I know, you know, legally, all we can do is the recall election. Really, um, I was thinking well, more, no, more along the lines. Party. 
you know, I, I think we need to fill our legislators' offices with, you know, we we protest the day of. That's great. What we need to do is get a group of folks once a week to go down to Dan May's office and and make him listen. We need a group of folks to go they, to people like refuse. Doug they Lamborn's refuse. office. They refuse. Well, That's the thing the of it is, is it's public property. If we go in there so with a group of people, people, they have people no right. People need to right. understand that their rights, right now we have no representation in Colorado. Which is what I'm saying. Our, we need our, to take our, back. our U.S. representative of Colorado is not representing us nationally with what it is that we wish. He's denying us locally access to him to even educate him. In El Paso County, the district attorney absolutely refusing the science of what's going on with well, medical he, cannabis. He well, obey the law. We, well, what we I'm saying is kind of jokingly, but um, it, they're being so ridiculous with, with ignoring the science, with what they're doing, with even prosecuting and breaking laws. Guys. Breaking uh, laws. From a fiscally conservative point, why are they spending tax dollars prosecuting you and you? Uh, to me, that's absurd. Well, they have to. But with the protests, and, and no, I'm, they can't allow this to happen. Right. Okay? I mean, you looked at the entire police state. Okay, the authoritarian establishment is constructed around the war on this plant. And okay, and if that falls apart. Okay, then then the House of Cards, which is constructed with lies, falls apart too. Well, okay, cannabis I mean, remember, is their cash illegal. crop. The DEA is funded by cannabis. There's no way around it. You know, like I believe 60 to 70 percent of their revenue comes from the war on cannabis. So without that, they're they're transferred to Border Patrol. Well, it's well, it's you know it goes to asset forfeiture. You know, I mean, who wins when they do a reverse thing? Where they pretend to be the drug dealer and confiscate your cash, okay? That that it was enticing people to break the law, who probably wouldn't have broke the law in the first place, okay? But it didn't reduce the amount of drugs available. It didn't take a drug dealer off the street. What it did was transfer ownership of your cash to the police department, mm-hmm. okay? And that's legal um, under statute, even though it is expressly forbidden in the United States Constitution. I know in Tennessee right now, um, they've been called out on their media there multiple times. Uh, the county sheriffs and the state police are fighting over territory on the interstates, and what they're doing is pulling people over. And if they have over a set amount, like, and it's not that much, like a thousand bucks cash, right, they're theirs. confiscating it. And you Must have to go money. prove you're not a drug dealer when you have for driving through their that. hick-ass state. Yeah, you only That's have 10 retarded. days. Uh, I, I'm sorry. I love people in Tennessee. I've got great friends and probably family there somewhere. But that policy and the fact that the police are doing that there. Well, but see, that same thing's going on in East Texas. It's going on sure. in Georgia. I mean, it's been documented time and time again. Sure. Intimidation okay, you're, you're looking and at threats from it, the district in many attorney's cases, office you know, law to citizens. Offices, you know, me. require on that. They look to asset forfeiture to fund over half of their budget. Sure, absolutely. Well, wait a minute. The cops aren't supposed to be able to kick down the door, steal your money, so the cops can stay in business. Mm-hmm. Man, that's theft. Yeah, I mean, we're. I, I think the majority of Americans would agree that we are over police, that we don't need tanks in our streets. You know, there's a Facebook photo that circulates around where it shows a picture of a soldier in Iraq, and above that, a member of a SWAT team. And if you look at that photo, I mean, it's ridiculous how much more gear the guy on the SWAT team has. When you know, like, 80% of their SWAT raids are for nonviolent drug offenders. Ah, uh, no, no, no. So uh, maybe not 80%. Statistically, the United States but... of America is the most dangerous place on the planet. <laughs> Why? We lock up five times more people than anybody else. I mean, it's lawless out there. We're stepping over bodies right and left. Just look at the numbers. Well, those people are dangerous. I mean, think about it. They're like farming plants right <laughs> they, they oh, smell forests <laughs> <laughs> you know some of them smell like skunks that, that's bad <laughs> well i mean the reality is this, this country has been engaged in a war against the flower for 80 years and the flower has kicked our ass yeah absolutely um, well, so excuse so, me but that means that the system that funds the war on drugs isn't smart as a plant no, I mean, you said earlier, you know, we have, literally, it's it's been shown through studies, we have more drugs and more drug users than ever before. So, yeah, after 70 years of fighting all drugs, I mean, it's absurd. We Not have all lost. drugs. Well, the no, 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 no. Well, are yeah, the let me, let me, <laughs> of drugs. More let me yeah. correct that. War on some drugs. Right, yes. no, the war on the drugs that don't kill. Right, exactly. Exactly. 
So, Audrey, you've got something to talk about real quick. Um, but before you do that, we uh, we had the Stanleys on tonight. I'm sure, I don't know if you were listening. Uh, their grandma passed, so they they had to head back. Um, but we've got some exciting news from them um, here at the iCannabis radio studio, if you will. We're trying to grow and get bigger. And they wanted to announce it, but they weren't able to because they had to peel out. So we'd like to welcome them to our family. They're going to be starting a show in a couple weeks here on the station. All right. Uh, I think they're going to dedicate their show a lot to the realm and, and w- the work they're doing there. So that's that's exciting. We're happy to have them. We welcome them. Yes. Welcome I think to they're, the family. they're going to be a great addition to the iCannabis Radio family. I believe so. Those, uh, those boys are responsible for my life, for saving my life. They provided me the medicine. When, when the uh, district attorney in El Paso County took on the role of doctor and came in and prescribed for me death, refused to look at what a real doctor had to say and here to use cannabis as a method for treating your cancer uh, uh, my medicine was taken away and these boys stepped forward in my consumption I've I've consumed over 10 pounds of medicine since last September that's just the dosage that I've been on so without the boys I wouldn't wouldn't be alive because my medicine Dan May has destroyed it through the policies of the bureaucracy that has taken it. They don't recognize it as medicine, but they're not even doing respectful diligence to evidence. They have no respect for the system really themselves. They abuse the system. They lie to the system. They threaten people that would expose them. Uh, this is going on. This is this is truth in El Paso County. There's, there's criminals running the show down there. We've got some judges now that are being exposed to what's going on and hopefully they help us take control back of our rights and our freedoms. But the people in office there, we can't seem to get them out. There's there's, there's nobody that will run against them. It's a scary thing. See, there's an inherent conflict. Okay, where does the judge's check come from? Right. It's a government (laughs) check. Yes. Okay, so to expect impartiality out of a judge is, uh, you can expect it, but, you know, that's not reality, folks. Well, we'll no. see. These people are obligated they're to their corporate, boss. They're corporate they're slaves minions. slaves to their paycheck. As I've said and, uh, tonight you know, multiple times, you just follow the money trail and it's there. Yeah. I mean, I mean, uh, corporations run our government. It's no big secret. You don't have to be a rocket science to fi- rocket figure that out. But we need to, to continue out. to give Actually, I think it's bureaucrats. I think it's those unelected, lifetime government employees you know somewhere below the 7000 presidential appointee level okay the faceless beings they're the ones that are writing the laws i mean the us code is over a million pages long okay so if you're an evelyn wood graduate and read 300 words a minute it will take you 23 years <laughs> to read the us code and that's assuming that they stop passing laws Right. Okay, last year more than 80,000 pages were added to the U.S. Code, but less than 10% of those went through Congress and were publicly debated by elected officials. Okay, what's happening now is the government is promulgating its own rules and regulations independent of public process. Well, that's what our founding fathers rejected and fought a war over. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think we got to get on here with Audrey. We, we're going to, Tom, I think we're going to have you back and debate, debate some more law soon. <laughs> uh, we've got an extra hour on our show these days, so we've got some time to, to work with that. Audrey, you've got a little something going on up this way here in Denver that you wanted to talk about. Yes, yes, we are. We're going to be implementing our patient assistance program up into Denver. Um, actually, next week, uh, Sean and Jared will be out uh, visiting. Um, I, I know that we've got five dispensaries and one doctor's office up there so far. Awesome. So that's a little bit of a start. We have um, quite a few patients that have called about our program from Denver. And um, so we're just going to uh, start implementing it up there, and um, then eventually we'll go through the whole state. Well, I'm going to do my uh, part, or I Cannabis Radio is, and Mr. Custer or I1 will go over and talk to our in house dispensary and our in house clinic and see if we can get you hooked up with them. Well, what kind of benefits are available for patients? 
Yes. Um, we have a program where we can get them reduced or free doctor's visits for their recommendation for their card. And then we also have, um, gosh, now we just added four dispensaries. I think we've got 27 dispensaries here in Colorado Springs awesome. that will reduce the cost of the meds for the patients in our program. One of the owners is sitting right beside us. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Lisa. Well, so not, cool. technically. not technically. I'm not an owner not anymore. Not technically an owner right now, mm -hmm. but yeah. Well, yeah. So we're running um, out of time really quickly, Audrey, because, you know, Mr. Gallagher likes to talk. Can I get you, um, we have you guys on every month, and we're going to continue to have you on. We've got these segments we're doing. Uh, in case no one noticed, the phone call to Dan May was our this week's version of Stickman versus the government, if you will. Uh, I like right. to call and raz people, so we're going to do that every week. We're going to highlight organizations that help people, which C4CPR is definitely one of those organizations. So real quick, I want to make sure before we run out of time that we get your info out there, phone number, email, ways for patients to get in touch with you, or dispensaries or doctors that want to help out. Yes, yes. Um, you can reach us at 719-271-8430 or www.c4cpr.org. You can also find us on Facebook, Coloradans for Cannabis Patient Rights. Awesome, Audrey. So we'll uh, call you again in, what, a couple weeks and schedule again? Have you come back okay. on and see what's going on. Hopefully by that time we've got you, uh, all the doctors and clinics you can handle with your patient load. So keep up yes. the good work. I, I thank you and commend you for everything that C4CPR does. Yes. Uh, Kudos. Jared and I have a new project going on Monday we're going to start working on, so we'll we'll talk about that soon, I'm sure. But enjoy your evening. Uh, go go have a bourbon for me. I, I was telling yeah, this well, family earlier. Yeah, we'll have a glass earlier. wine. Bourbon's not good. <laughs> yeah, John and I were comparing notes earlier about bourbon, so I, I'm kind of craving one right now. But enjoy your evening, ma'am. Thanks for coming on, and we shall talk to you soon. Thanks, Audrey. All right. Thanks, you guys. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Take yeah, care. Absolutely. Bye-bye. So, Bob, Tom, right. Bob and Tom, isn't there another show called Yes, that? there is a Bob and Tom Bob show. Bob and Tom? <laughs> guys, I really appreciate you guys coming on. Bob, you've become, you and Elisa both have become really good friends of mine, and to watch you guys go through what you're going through, it, it sucks. Um, well, if we can keep education, thank you for letting us be here because that's the chance that we got to educate people. You know, good people, if once they get the facts, if they'll take the time to get the facts, we can stop this prejudice that's uh, deceit, that's deceitful, this lie against what's going on. Get the truth. We've got good things that can help America in so many ways. Absolutely. So your next court date is when then? Uh, May 31st. May 31st. We'll I'll be, be there. Free trial hearing. Uh, I'll uh, be there. Um, we're gonna. What I'm gonna do is get you guys back on. Now that they pushed your trial back out, we'll just get you two back on for another night of ranting and raving. Elisa, okay. we're quickly running out. Do you have Let's any see. last things to add? Actually, what I'd like to do is thank our wonderful sponsors. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'd like to thank the Realm, the Stanley Brothers. Um, Southern Colorado Medical Marijuana in Colorado Springs, the famous Weed Pimps, and Green Monster Glass, also the Indispensary in Colorado Springs. Thanks, you guys. We can't do this without you. Absolutely. And get out and visit them all and support them. They support activism, and people who support activism keep our industry alive. Until next time, we love you guys all. Stay safe and go educate someone. Peace. Peace.